Somebody praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for the people here. Thank you for this retreat. And thank you for your children. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for the workers. Thank you for everybody here. We pray, Lord, you touch every life. Turn every life around. Transform our lives by your word in Jesus' name. I will pray that everyone that hears now will never be the same again. Set your people free. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're looking at John chapter 19. In John chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 16. And it's talking about Jesus Christ. It's talking about his crucifixion. It's talking about the way he bore the cross. It's talking about the way he died on that cross. And it's talking about the work he did. The redemption he brought and the power he manifest through what he did on the cross of Calvary. John chapter 19, reading here from verse 16. John 19, reading from verse 16. Then delivered he him, therefore unto them, to be crucified. And he took Jesus, and he led him away. Christ, born in Bethlehem. Christ, who lived a perfect life, a sinless life, a holy life. A spotless life. A God-pleasing life. He did no sin. He did no evil. He committed no error. He lived better than an angel. He lived as a son of God. He lived as the one that God said, Here is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. But the time came that the purpose of his coming to this world to be a sacrifice, to make an atonement, and to die for your sin, for my sin, and for the sin of the whole world, that time eventually came. And it says, they took Jesus and led him away. Verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into the place called the place of his call, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one, Jesus in the midst that came the end of his sojourn here on earth he had come to do what the father appointed for him to do in verse 30 when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished it is finished. Say it with me. It is finished. Say it again. Finally say that. The struggle that began in the Garden of Eden. The search for the Savior. The work of the Savior. The redemption of mankind. The forgiveness coming from the throne of God. 
the atonement that will be made for the sins of the whole world. Behold the Lamb of God. And as Jesus bore the cross, he was crucified to the cross. And he died on the cross just before he breathed his last. He said, it is finished. The problem of sin, finished. Problem of sickness, finished. Problem of attacks, finished. Problem of your poverty, finished. A problem of your cause, finished. Every load you carry, you drop it here today. Every sorrow you have is finished here today. All your sicknesses are finished here today. Because Jesus bore the cross. He bore the cross for you. He bore the shame for you. He bore the suffering for you. He bore the sorrow for you. And he said, it is finished. A fulfillment has come in your life today. And all those powers that bind you and all the shackles that chain you, it is finished. As you think about what you carry, as you think about what you suffer, as you think about the challenges you have, remember those words, it is finished. There will be a demonstration, a manifestation in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 34, but one of the soldiers was a spear, pierced a side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record. And his record is true. And he knoweth that he says true, that he might believe. There are believers here today. All that Christ did as he bore the cross for you and all that he has called you to do is grace flowing into your life. It will be done for you in Jesus' name. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture. They shall look on him whom they pierced. Verse 17. And he bearing his cross went forth. And he bearing his cross went forth. We're looking at the message. is bearing of the cross is bearing of the cross that's what gives us freedom that's what brings us fruit that's what gives us fellowship as we come to meditate and to deliberate and to proclaim Christ bearing the cross for you as we come to look at the scriptures the cross on which Jesus died and you will see why that happened. And the redemption that brings to your life. And the goodness that is going to come to you. As you believe on the Lord Jesus that bore the cross for you. You will never be the same again. Three things we are going to consider before we pray. Number one, our freedom. Say my freedom. Say that again. My freedom, our freedom. Number two, our faithfulness. Our faithfulness. Number three, our fellowship. Freedom, faithfulness, fellowship. Number one, our freedom through his bearing the cross. Our freedom through his bearing the cross. It was for you he bore the cross. It was because you couldn't bear your problem alone. You couldn't stand alone. It was because your challenges were too heavy for you. That he said, I'll bear that cross for you. I'll die for you. I'll make the atonement for you. 
I will settle your problem for you. Our freedom through his bearing the cross. Number two, our faithfulness in bearing the cross. Our faithfulness in bearing the cross. Yes, he bore the cross. But he's saying, follow me. Look at me and do what I've done. He says, reflect my sacrifice. Reflect my suffering. Reflect my self-denial. Reflect my lifestyle. Reflect my power. Reflect what I have done so that what I have done for you will make a mark in your life. And then as he makes that mark in your life, that reflection will come through your life. And you'll say, here goes the Christian. Somebody who lives like Christ, reflecting the bearing of the cross. Our faithfulness in bearing the cross. Number three, a fellowship as cross bearers with Christ. A fellowship as cross bearers with Christ. We have fellowship with him. We are united to him. And as we are united to him, we bear the cross like he did. We fellowship with him in the bearing of the cross. And our lives will never be the same again. And as you come side by side with Christ, and you identify with Christ, and you stay side by side with him, you will find he gives you the grace, he gives you the power, he gives you the enablement, and he gives you the strength to go through life happily and victorious in Jesus' name. Number one, our freedom through his bearing the cross. You come to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. I'm reading verses 33 and 34. Luke chapter 23 verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. That's on the cross. There they crucified him to fulfill prophecy. There they crucified him to show that the final Pascal lamb. And there they crucified him so that he can bear your pain. He can bear your punishment. He can bear all the consequences of your sin. And there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was talking about, number one, the sinners then. Number two, the sinners now. Number three, about you. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What does that mean? Did they know they were crucifying an innocent victim? Yes, they knew. Didn't they know that it was for envy? They delivered him unto Pilate. Yes, they knew. Didn't they know they were sinful and he was righteous? Of course, they knew. Didn't they know that they could not accuse him of any sin? Yes, they knew. What did Jesus mean? Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. They didn't know the eternal consequence of their sin. They didn't know the result of their sin. They didn't know that Jerusalem will be leveled. They didn't know Israel 
will be destroyed. They didn't know Israel will be scattered. They thought it was just there. When they said, let his blood come upon us and our children. And many people that sin today. The people that do evil today. They don't know what they're doing. That's why the Lord Jesus prayed. And he's praying for everyone. And he's saying, Father, they don't know the consequence of sin. They don't know there is a hell fire at the end of the life of sinning. They don't know what they do. Bring them to repentance. Bring them to conviction. Bring them to a turning around. Let there be a change. Let there be a repentance. And let there be a conviction. And let there be conversion. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He was praying for their salvation. He was praying for their conversion. He was praying for their repentance. Then it happened. Now it's happening. Your repentance time has come. Your conversion time has come. Your salvation time has come. It was for their freedom from sin. There were different kinds of sins in their lives. They didn't know the consequence of those sins. They didn't know the soul that sinneth, it shall die. They didn't know it's appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. They didn't know the wages of sin is death. And so he prayed for them. He said, Father, set them free. Free from sin. Not only that. Number two, they didn't know that sin brings suffering. Sin brings sickness. And sin brings oppression. And he was praying for them that God will set them free from sin. Number one. I'm free from sickness. He'll set you free. I said he will set you free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. What cord does Satan use in binding somebody? It's a cord of sin. It's a cord of iniquity. It's a cord of rebellion. It's a cord of disobedience. Once there is rebellion... The Holy Spirit goes out, like in the life of Saul, the evil spirit comes in. Once there's rebellion, like in the life of Saul, the evil sin takes hold of the man. And Jesus Christ came to set us free, came to set you free, free from sin, and free from sickness, and free from Satan. We're coming back to this, John chapter 19. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus, therefore, had received the finger, he said, it is finished. That was a final sacrifice. No other sacrifice after that time. No other animal sacrifice after that time. And of course, no human sacrifice. Any other sacrifice after that time is no sacrifice to God. Because the final sacrifice are declared. It is finished. Any other sacrifice now is sacrifice to the devil. Sacrifice to demons. Because now... The final sacrifice will take away sin. Final sacrifice will take away sickness. Final sacrifice will take away every evil power that sacrifice had been offered. And since Jesus said it is finished, now today there's freedom from sin. There's freedom from sickness. And there's freedom from satanic attack. John chapter 8 in John chapter 8 verse 34 Jesus answered them verily verily I say unto you whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin is a slave of sin 
and he came to set us free from slavery. There are people who struggle in their lives. Maybe drunkenness, they struggle. They are not free. Maybe a particular bad habit. They struggled. They are not free. And Satan knows if you are not free from that sin and you die in that condition, slaves of sin, slaves of Satan, don't go to heaven. The slaves of sin, the slaves of Satan, they spend eternity in hell. Look at this. Verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. The servant, the slave of sin, abideth not in the house forever. The servant, the slave of Satan, abideth not in the house forever. But the son abideth ever. The son abideth ever. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is in heaven. And abides forever. Forever in heaven. And the people that believe on his name. To them he gave power. To become the sons of God. Even the people that believe on his name. Those are the people that the Lord says. He calls them sons. He calls them sons because the sins are forgiven. He calls them sons because... The sins are taken away. He called them sons because the power of sin is broken. He called them sons because the punishment of sin is taken away. He called them son because the hold of sin is taken away so that they can abide in the house of the heavenly father forever and ever. If you are still a slave of sin, if you die in that condition, you cannot abide in the house of God, in heaven, in paradise, forever. He comes to set you free. Somebody there said, he comes to set you free. Secret sin, he'll set you free. Habitual sin, he'll set you free. Common sin, he will set you free. Public sin, he'll set you free. Private sin, he'll set you free. Look at verse 35 there. In verse 35, it says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Verse 36, If the son therefore shall make you free, glorious day, wonderful day and it is today somebody there said it is today if the son therefore shall make you free he'll make you free i said he'll make you free for if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed there are people that come to church that's why it ends there's no freedom in their lives. They're not free from defilement. They're not free from evil. They're not free from the power of occultism. They're not free from secret sin. They're not free from lying. They're not free from deception. They're not free from hypocrisy. But the Lord is saying, He died on the cross for you. That he might set you free. And if the son shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. That's what indeed there means truly. Completely. Entirely. Perfectly. Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. And at henceforth, we shall not serve sin. See what Christ has done. 
You see what Christ has brought. You see the accomplishment of Christ on the cross of Calvary for you. Because he came to die for you. And he says, the body of sin, the very nature of sin, the very nucleus of sin, the very root of sin will be destroyed. It will destroy that sin in your life. The sin that propels you to sin. The sin that pushes you to sin. The sin that drives you to sin. It says, he was crucified. He died for you so that that body of sin. He died for you so that that nucleus of sin, that depravity, the sin that drives you, and the sin that propels you to keep on sinning, you will get rid of that sin in your life. We serve a Christ who saves. We serve a Christ who sanctifies. We serve a Christ who delivers. We serve a Christ who sets us free. Free from external sin. And free from internal sin. Free from every evil. And he breaks the yoke of evil in your life. And he says, knowing this, you will know it today. Knowing this, you'll know it by experience. Knowing this, you know it as a personal for inheritance that you have in your life. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. And that henceforth ye shall not serve sin. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. And to be alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore. Let not sin therefore. It sets you free. Therefore, he died for you. Therefore, he took your sins away. Therefore, he broke the yoke. Therefore, he destroyed the very origin of sin. Therefore, he proclaimed it is finished. He said, therefore, let not sin reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the laws thereof. Verse 18, being then made free. Thank God I am free. I said, thank God I am free. Somebody there I said, thank God I am free. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, but now, but now, when is your freedom? But now, I said, when is your freedom? But now, be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Holiness and everlasting life. Righteousness and everlasting life. That's what he promised to do. That's what he has the power to do. That's what he's going to accomplish your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made, has made, has made, has made, has made me free from the law of sin and death. 
What's the law of sin? That's the principle of sin. That's the power of sin. That's the irresistible pull to sin in. And it says, because Christ died. It says, because Christ went to the cross for me. It says, because Christ bore the cross. And he bore that cross for you. It says, because of that, the law of sin. And the law of death is broken and destroyed. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Somebody is free there today. Has made me free from the law of sin and of death. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also, wonderful, he also, that's my Savior, he also, that's your Lord, he also, that's the Redeemer, he also, that's the one who died on the cross of Calvary for you, he also, himself, likewise, took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. Through that death on the cross of Calvary, he manifests the power to destroy even the devil and all his yokes. All the yokes of sin he will break. All the yokes of Satan he will break. All the powers of sin and sickness and Satan will break out of your life in Jesus' name. By that single death on the cross of Calvary, he came to set you free. All the chains that bind you, all the shackles that bind you, all the powers of Satan that hold you captive, congratulations, you are free. I said, congratulations, you are free. Anything they said in the dream, that's small, you're free. Anything they said in their shrine, that's small, you're free. Anything they said in the occultic assembly, thank God you're free. Miracles are coming your way. The power of the Lord is coming your way. Because he that had the power of death, the devil, has been destroyed out of your life. Verse 15. And to deliver them. Who through fear of death. Were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The Lord has redeemed you. From the curse of the law. I'm talking to somebody there. I'm talking to one particular person there. You are the person I'm talking to. I said you are the person I'm talking to. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. I thought somebody will say amen. Christ has redeemed you from the curse. From the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. After the cause of your life is removed, then verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we, who are the people? That we, I said to other people that we might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. It takes away your sin. It takes away your sickness. It takes away your suffering. It takes away your slavery. It takes away your curse. It takes away your infirmity. And it says you free. 
I said, he set you free. I said, he set you free. Free today. Free tomorrow. Free this month. Free this year. Free for the rest of your life. Point number two now. A faithfulness in bearing the cross. Our faithfulness in bearing the cross. This is an area many people don't understand. And it's very important for you, for me, to understand that bearing the cross is identifying with Christ. Why do I need to identify with Christ? Satan still remembers the deadly blow he was given on the cross of Calvary because the promise of God had said, I'll put enmity between you and the woman. He shall bruise your head and you'll bruise his heel. And when Jesus said on the cross of Calvary that it is finished, Jesus Christ, by a deadly blow, struck the head of the devil. Since that time, any time Satan hears of the cross, he feels the pain in the head. Not headache, it's more than headache. Not migraine, it's more than migraine. It's a deadly blow he felt in the head. And any time you mention the cross, just the mention of the cross makes Satan to tremble. And when Satan sees anybody carrying the cross of Christ, it reminds him, ah, that's a follower of Christ. That is a symbol of the cross that knocked off his head. And when you bear the cross and you identify with Christ, then you are a conqueror over the devil. You conquer in Jesus' name. If you are faithful and you carry the cross, you identify with Christ. And then you are a terror to the devil. I said you are a terror to the devil. Because you remind him of the cross on which Jesus died. Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 36. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. And a man's force shall be they of his own household. Hmm. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me i don't understand that do you that's what people say they say they don't understand i'll explain to you see jesus christ look up here he lived the perfect life he lived the sinless life he lived a life holier than the life of an angel and then you were the sinner. You were the criminal. The sentence of death was upon you. And while they're leading you to be crucified and to die, he said, come here. I'll take your place. And he died for you. And he bore your sin. And he bore your pain. And he bore your agony. From eternity, until that time, the father had never separated from the son. But because he bought your sin, the father abandoned him. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Look at Jesus. Look at the nail in his hand. Look at the nail on his feet. Look at the mark of the spear on his side. Look at him bleeding. 
here is your father. They said, you stole. They judged in the court. And they sentenced you to only three years imprisonment. And your father said, I don't know why you got the spirit of stealing. There's no stealing in our family. I don't know why you got that. Now you are going to prison. Don't mention my name anymore. Don't use my name anymore. Your father rejected you. Just because of three years of imprisonment. He cannot identify with you in the public. And Jesus Christ, not three years, not ten years, not a hundred years, an eternity of imprisonment in hellfire. He said, I'll bear it for you. Now he said, if I bore so great punishment for you, if, if I bore an eternity of suffering for you, and then if you love your father, your mother, your daughter, your son, who cannot take three years of imprisonment, what if it's 40 years of imprisonment? It says, that's what you did. Now you are going to prison for 40 years. Bye-bye. I'll never see you again. I'll live my life. I'll live my life without you. He cannot bear all that for you. Look at Jesus that bore an eternity of suffering for you. And then he says, if you love that your father more than me, not counting what I've done for you, you are not worthy of my name. You love your mother more than me. You are not worthy of me. And you love your son, your daughter, who cannot bear anything for you. I bore an eternity of punishment for you. And you can't love me more than them. You are not worthy of me. That's what it means. Then it tells us in verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross. He that taketh not his cross. What's the cross? The cross is a symbol of humiliation. Humiliation. You understand humiliation? When he crucified Jesus Christ, he was not wearing a suit. You understand humiliation? When they crucified Jesus Christ, they removed his clothes. They put a crown of thorns on him. They said, he said he's a king. If you're a king, come down from the cross. He could come down. If he came down from the cross, you will suffer forever. He was looking at you from that time. He knew when you will be born. He knew when you will live. He said, I cannot come from the cross for him. If I were to show my power, I can come down from the cross. If I were to show my authority, I can come down from the cross. But for his sake, but for her sake, I will not come down from the cross. He bore shame. He bore humiliation for you. Now he said, when you have a cross, you're a Christian, they make fun of you. You go to deeper life, they make fun of you. You read the Bible, they make fun of you. You tie scarf, they make fun of you. You are not modern, they make fun of you. Humiliation, he said, think about that humiliation. And think about the humiliation that Jesus had when they removed his clothes, when they gambled on his clothes. When they nailed him almost naked. The humiliation. He said, that's a cross I bore for you. If you cannot bore a little shame. A little humiliation. A little fun. And a little shame. Degradation on my behalf. He says, you cannot be my disciple. That's what it means. And when you bear that cross. The same cross. A similar cross. On which Jesus died. He's saying, Satan will recognize you. That you are one of the people of Christ. And you'll be a terror to the devil. Somebody there said, you'll be a terror to the devil. But if you say, no, I cannot bear that. Which one will you bear? You'll bear hellfire. I cannot bear that. Which one will you bear? You'll bear eternal suffering. 
I cannot bear that. Which one are you going to bear? You're going to bear humiliation and shame forever and ever. God forbid. I said, God forbid. He that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. I'm reading from Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 34. Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Here's what it says. When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me you know there are many people that and they talk about denial denial self denial self denial they said I would have become a Christian but they self denial that's my problem such a problem look at what Jesus denied himself of he was a king of angels he was a prince in heaven he sat on the throne of glory. He was with the heavenly father. An announcement came. Who will go into the world and redeem humanity from sin. And for a period, Revelation chapter 8, nobody was found. There was silence in heaven. And John, the beloved, who saw that, he said, I wept. I cried because there was nobody qualified, nobody able, nobody available to open the books. And then one of the angels came to me and said, Weep not, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the roots and the offspring of David. He has prevailed. Is going to open the book. There was joy in heaven. What nobody could do in heaven. Christ surrendered himself. He said, I will leave the worship of angels. I will deny myself of the glory of eternity. I will deny myself of the adoration of the angels forever and ever. I will go into the world. He didn't come as a man. He came as a baby. Baby boy. And was born not in a reputable hospital. He was born in the inn. And then Herod wanted to kill him. And he was taken to Egypt. And then he came back. And he lived normal life. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was walking up and down. He sat by the well. He denied himself of the glories above. Denied himself of everything. And now going to the cross, Peter threw out his sword and slashed off the ear of one of those servants. And Jesus said, put that back. The cup which my father has given me, will I not drink it? He stooped down. He took that piece of the ear and put it back. He said, Peter, don't you know, I still have authority over 12 legions of angels. I could call them. They will scatter all these people. But he denied himself of that now. After denying himself of everything, for your salvation. It says now, deny yourself of a bottle of alcohol. Think about that. Think about that. A bottle of alcohol, just do something. Just do something that will show you appreciate my own denial. Deny yourself of this, of this, of this. 
If you deny yourself for them, you're still alive. It doesn't take life from you. You deny yourself for them. Anything that contradicts Christ, anything that contradicts Christianity, anything that contradicts the way that we live in Christ, deny yourself for them and you still have your life. You still have the joy. You still have the promises. You still have heaven. You still have glory. You still have promotion. And that little thing you cannot deny yourself of. And he said, but look at what I gave up for you. If I gave up this for you, you don't show any gratitude and deny yourself of those little things, you're not worthy of him. That's what he said. I want you to compare all the things you are trying to complain about. Do we give up this? Yes. Do we give up this? Yes. Do we give up that? Yes. But compare that with what Christ has given up. And you know that all those things are nothing. And as you enter that life of fellowship with Christ, the joy of following Christ, and the joy of living for Christ, and the power of living for him, you'll taste it and know it in your life in Jesus' name. That's why it says, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross and follow me. And wouldn't you be ashamed? Christ is going in front. He's carrying a heavy cross. That's a cross not made by the Romans alone. All the hatred of the Jews manufactured that cross. All the hatred of Satan and evil spirits brought that cross to being. All the sins of humanity manufactured and made that cross. It was heavy and Jesus carried that. Look at Peter following, he's carrying a cross. John following, carrying a cross. Matthew following, carrying a cross. All the worthies of old, everybody following, carrying a cross. Look at him. Look at this one. Look at this one. Just walking like this, no cross. Just walking and just following. Christ in front, carrying a cross. Everybody else carrying their cross. And this one, I'm a Christian. This one, I'm a believer. This one, I am born again. Just walking, no self-denial, no cross. Even Satan can spot out that one. That one is not real. Bear your cross. Bear your cross. Bear your cross. Deny yourself and be among the multitudes of people that identify with Jesus Christ. And they say, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of identification, for the sake of following the Lord, whatever challenge, whatever persecution, whatever difficulty, I will bear my cross. Somebody there, I will bear my cross. I will bear my cross. Look up here, look up here, look up here. The cross we are talking about, the Lord has made it so easy. Because I see you smiling. I see you laughing. Since I came, I see you clapping. Since I came, I see you. You have a house. Some of you have cars. Some of you have certificates. And look at the chair you're sitting on. Look at the comfort you have. And yet, you're bearing the cross. It's just a little scene. Just to show that you are part of the people of God. It doesn't weigh you down. It doesn't disturb your life. It doesn't hurt you at all. And you have your name in the book of life. This is just to show this little challenge. This little difficulty that whatever happens, you will follow Christ. And thank God, so far so good. You are following Christ. You will keep on following Christ. You will not go back. 
And whatever the devil may try to do, if it's going to be too heavy, Jesus will stay, stop there. And Satan will stop. And you will not have to carry something uh, that is too heavy for you in Jesus' name. Because we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 13. There has no temptation taking you. There has no trouble come upon you. There has no trial taking you. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Give me a good amen there. Amen. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted, to be tested, to be tried, above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. You will bear it. You will not fall. You will not fail. You will not falter. The Lord will uphold you. The grace of God will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Number three, our fellowship as cross bearers with Christ. Our fellowship as cross bearers with Christ. Fellowship with him. Bearing the cross, looking like him, walking like him, running the race after him. And then more grace will flow into your life. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. That's what he does. Fellowship with him. He says the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. That world will not have power over your life. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Power of his resurrection. On that day, the stone was rolled away. Every stone of hindrance of your life rolled away in Jesus' name. Every stone of limitation rolled away from your life in Jesus' name. You will know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And the fellowship of his suffering. What does that mean? It means that you'll be made conformable unto him, unto his death. Look at First Peter. Chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Reading here from verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Heaven will rejoice with you. The Lord will rejoice with you. The church will rejoice with you. If ye be reproached with Christ, for the name of Christ, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part is evil spoken of, but on your part is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evil doer, or as a busy body. In other men's matters, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, that's a fellowship, as cross bearers with Christ, 
If anyone suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Because then, when you suffer with him, you will reign with him. I said you will reign with him. If you deny him, I know you will not deny him. I said if you deny him, I know you will not deny him. If you deny him, he will deny you. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Glorified together. We become heirs of the Lord and joint heirs with him. That's a fellowship. And in fellowship with him, we overcome. In fellowship with him, we reign. In fellowship with him, we have dominion. And because we're in fellowship with him, he's watching over us. He'll watch over you. And then we come back now around the circle to the freedom. Freedom, faithfulness, fellowship. In our fellowship, there'll be fruitfulness. You will be fruitful. Barrenness in every area is taken away from your life. It sets you free. It sets me free. Me, me. It sets me free. I said it sets me free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. Free from satanic attack. Free from the curse. Free from every yoke. John chapter 8 verse 36. Every the son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son shall make me free, say that. If the Son shall make me free, I can't hear my people. If the Son shall make me free, I, 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 shall be free indeed. That cross of Jesus Christ sets you free. Where is the person I'm talking about? Why don't you rise up there and be free? And you tell the Lord, freedom, faithfulness, fruitfulness, fellowship. Tell the Lord, it requires a demand self-denial. Demands you're bearing the cross. Be faithful. Be faithful. He'll see you through. He'll bear the greater part of the cross. He'll bear the greater part of the cross. He'll bear the greater part of the cross. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. The Lord is on your side. All the grace you need, He will give. All the power you need, He will give. He'll sustain you. He'll support you. He'll stay by you. He'll break every yoke in your life. He'll make your life happy, joyful, victorious, triumphant. He bore the cross for you. Bear little pain for him. Bear the little challenge for him. Bear the little humiliation for him. 
made a little persecution for him. And say, Lord, I stand with you. I stay with you. I'll not go back. I'll bear my cross. I'll bear my persecution. I'll bear my trial. And I know your power will sustain me. There's a great day in our life here. This is a wonderful day in our life here. Tell the Lord. Make sure you are born again. Make sure you've given up all your sin. You've handed them over to Christ. And you're following him in fellowship. And you'll stand for Christ anywhere, anytime. Whatever people say, whatever people do, whatever the persecution, whatever the humiliation, I stand for Christ. I stand with Christ I will never leave him he will never leave you it's cross or cross out every evil sin out of your life you're moving you're getting into another level of victory today in your life Consecrate your life forever unto the Lord. He'll stay with you. He'll abide with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Don't give up because of this little, little, insignificant problems compared with what Jesus bore for you. In Jesus name we pray. Open your eyes and look up here. I know you've heard this before but you need to hear this. God loves you. Have you heard that before? You need to hear that again. Every challenge you go through, every difficulty that confronts you, everyone that threatens your life, anyone that wants to make himself the master and the lord of your life, and he stands in your way, and you're afraid of them, Christ is by your side. He said, there is nothing, nothing, there's nothing you'll ever come across in life that he has not taken away to hang it on the cross. Powers of darkness fall before you. Terminal sicknesses will be taken away from your body. Occultic powers trying to fight against you. Fight against your business. Fight against your children. Fight against your family. That power is broken. All the things they do in the dark. All the things they do in the forest. All the leaves they join together. Hey, come on now. All those trees who created them. All those leaves who created them. Somebody wants to take something that your father made. And he wanted to use what your father made to kill a child of God. Never. 
I said never. I said never. No minute of your life will be removed from you. Joy has come to you. Happiness has come to you. Victory has come unto you. Triumph has come unto you. Barrenness is gone. Failure is gone. Strength and power has come. And the cross of Jesus Christ will put you on the top every time in Jesus' name. You have hands of victory to raise up. You have hands of rejoicing to raise up. Your victory has come. After this day, don't complain again. Don't complain again. Because he has fought your battle for you. And he has won your victory for you. It has happened. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your people. People of victory. People who are triumphant. And people who are more than conquerors. I pray, Lord, every challenge of their lives, take away in Jesus' name. Every oppression, take away in Jesus' name. Every sickness, take away in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, by the stripes of Jesus, everyone be healed in Jesus' name. All those occultic powers against any life there. Lord, I pray, grant your people deliverance. Grant your people dominion. The power of the Lord comes to set you free now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, everything they found impossible before, which you have ordained for them, from this hour, make it possible. Every contradiction of the enemy, Lord, blow them out with the explosive of the power of the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. And I pray that every good promise you have made unto them, there will be a fulfillment today. Salvation for the sinner. Restoration for the backslider. Strength for the believer. Healing for the sick. Deliverance for the oppressed. Life for those who are in despair. Victory for everyone. Where there was failure before, there will be success from today. I pray you'll do something unforgettable. Something remarkable. Something supernatural. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of all your people. I thank you because I know it is done. I know it is done. I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.